Prince Rainier III wanted a simple funeral, but it ended up being a lavish event, attended by world leaders and global celebrities. So will Prince Albert's burial be just as extravagant as his dad's? Here's what we know. According to some, members of European royal families are not necessarily entitled to the same level of privacy as normal citizens. By this school of thought, royals receive a certain amount of financial support from taxpayers and, in exchange, open the details of their lives to the public. Of course, this theory does not entirely apply to the Monegasque royal family, as Monaco barely even taxes its residents. But it is true that the House of Grimaldi has historically been very honest with the public about the health of its ruler. The family proved its transparency back in 2005, when Prince Rainier III fell ill with heart and kidney failure. During this time, the palace was quick to update royal fans about the monarch's status and remained truthful about his prognosis. Against all odds, Rainier survived almost a full month after he was admitted to the hospital. Even so, however, the palace avoided any rumors of a miraculous recovery, instead telling the press that his health remained precarious. Because of this history, we can only expect the palace to be just as sincere about the state of Prince Albert's health moving forward. And when his time does come, we can likely count on the palace to be frank about the situation. When Prince Albert does eventually die, Monaco and its royal family will both go into a period of mourning. Meanwhile, his family would spend a full three months mourning their more personal losses. In practice, this period of bereavement might mean that life in Monaco will come to a standstill. Shortly after Prince Rainier III passed away in 2005, church bells across Monaco began to toll, spreading news of his death across the region. And as more and more people came to understand what this meant, they began to close their businesses. At the time, the New York Times reported that enterprises ranging from shops to Monaco's famous casinos all stopped working out of respect for the late monarch. In fact, the news outlet claimed that the city of Monaco all but shut down after Renier's death. Uh, well, that's a tremendous message to the whole world. Of course, when Albert passes away, we can expect the Monegasque people to behave similarly in his memory. When Prince Rainier III died, it was believed that the monarch wanted his funeral to be simple and without flamboyance. At the time, the local archbishop, Bernard Barcy, told the press, it will be a simple funeral in accordance with the prince's wishes, similar to the one for Princess Grace. That being said, Rainier's funeral ended up being a lavish event, attended by fashion designers, politicians, and of course, princes and princesses from around the world. This means that Albert's funeral will probably be just as memorable, even if he specifically asks for a more low-key event. I hope I'll, I'll be able to make my own choice and my own decision. According to royal tradition, the religious portion of Albert's funeral will likely start out with the arrival of several big-name figures at the Monaco Cathedral. If his father's funeral is anything to go by, we can expect to see these individuals pull up to the event one by one in black cars. Female guests will be required to wear black hats or even veils that cover their hair. Meanwhile, male guests will mostly wear black suits. Back in 2005, Prince Rainier III opted for an open casket event. However, leading up to the religious portion of the ceremony, his coffin was closed and a Monegasque flag was draped over the top. Then, in a classic royal funeral procession, the local guardsmen carried the box through town with the royal family trailing behind. Albert's funeral might very well include this unique display of public grief as well. At the end of the day, Prince Albert's funeral will likely be a high-profile event that draws big names from across the world. After all, when Prince Rainier III died, their religious ceremony attracted some majorly significant figures, including King Juan Carlos of Spain and the then-president of France, Jacques Chirac. Naturally, though, whenever so many important people gather in one place, security needs to be ultra-high. In the past, this has meant hiring a startling number of personnel to keep the guests safe. Indeed, NBC reported that 1,300 police were responsible for keeping the peace at Rainier's funeral. Other precautions employed at the time included clearing the streets of any potential threats, such as parked cars. Funeral paraphernalia like flower arrangements and wreaths were all searched for bombs before they could enter the cathedral. While it still remains unclear just how much security will be necessary at Albert's funeral, we can expect the Principality to put plenty of safe measures into place. 
These days, it is believed that Prince Albert and Princess Charlene's relationship is somewhat unsteady. As far back as their 2011 nuptials, it was rumored that Charlene did not want to go through with the wedding. In the years that have followed, at least one royal expert has questioned their union, with historian Philippe Delorme telling the French outlet Madame Figaro that he believed the couple have an arranged marriage. Even if these rumors were true, though, we could expect Albert and Charlene to be buried together. Royal tradition dictates that the prince and princess will find their final resting place in the Grimaldi family crypt in the Monaco Cathedral. In the past, Albert's parents, Prince Rainier III and Grace Kelly, were also buried side by side in this magnificent structure, despite rumors that they struggled with infidelity. When I married, my private life became public, and I really had no privacy at all. So, unless they were to get a divorce, it is difficult to imagine a different fate for Albert and Charlene. When Prince Albert dies, it is expected that his son, Prince Jacques, will take the crown. After all, Jacques is Albert's oldest legitimate son, and according to the Monegasque constitution, this makes him the heir to the throne. That being said, it is possible that Jacques will have some competition when it comes to taking over for Albert. The young prince has an older brother, Alexander Grimaldi, who was born out of wedlock in 2003 to Albert and the glamorous former Air France flight attendant, Nicole Cost. By law, Alexander has been excluded from the line of succession due to his so-called illegitimate status. In Monaco, however, there exists a legal precedent for love children taking the throne. In fact, Albert's own father, Prince Rainier III, was the illegitimate grandson of the Monegasque ruler, Prince Louis, and a cabaret singer, Marie-Juliette Louvet. Perhaps Alexander could use this piece of history to secure his place in the line of succession. Interestingly, beginning in 2023, Alexander became more outspoken about the way he has been sidelined due to his pedigree. Speaking to the French outlet Pointe de Vue, Alexander contested his illegitimate status, stating, Nor am I illegitimate since I was born. Neither of my parents was in another marriage, and they did not commit adultery. Using that word is insulting. Whether he will use this argument to contest the throne remains to be seen. If Alexander Grimaldi does choose to contest his so-called legitimacy, we can expect that Albert having legitimate heirs of his own will play a central part in the debate. In Monaco, the key responsibility of the reigning prince is to produce an heir who can one day take the crown. Because of this, past attempts to steal the throne have centered on issues of fertility. Indeed, when Prince Louis died in 1949, his grandson, Prince Rainier III, stood to inherit the crown. However, Rainier's sister, Princess Antoinette, felt that she was more deserving of this position, seeing as she was older. In hopes of snatching the throne out from beneath Rainier, Antoinette began spreading rumors about the prince's ability to have children. She began whispering that her brother's then-girlfriend, Giselle Pascal, was infertile and completely unable to provide Monaco with the heir it needed. Of course, the princess also let her own fertility speak for itself. At the time, Antoinette had already given birth to a healthy son. In the end, though, Antoinette's scheming did not have the effect that she was hoping for. Renier and Giselle broke up, the prince took the crown, and Antoinette became an outcast in the royal family. Prince Albert's situation is far less complex, as he and Princess Charlene already have a legitimate son. That being said, the princess's strategy could very well stand as an indicator of how a potential future coup could be staged. Regardless of who becomes the next Crown Prince of Monaco, there will be a luxurious coronation ceremony following Prince Albert's death. Indeed, the next monarch will be celebrated in a multi-event extravaganza that will seal this person's commitment to the crown. When Albert himself took the throne back in 2005, the prince was first legitimized during a special mass that took place at Monaco Cathedral. After the religious ceremony, fireworks erupted and locals enjoyed a celebratory picnic. I think the party starts now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Months later, Albert was honored once again, this time in a civil ceremony at the Prince's Palace of Monaco. Following this big event, the newly crowned prince dined with some of Europe's most prestigious names, including Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden and the UK's Prince Edward and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh. 
The next morning, these significant figures gathered once again to attend a mass meant to honor the Principality's national holiday, Monaco Day. When Albert passes away, the next Crown Prince will likely enjoy a similar compilation of events and ceremonies. However, the guest list will probably be much different by then, as Europe's next generation of young royals is already growing up.